Hello guys, it's Slime103, and today I have a little bit of an update video for everyone. Uh, so a lot of you have been asking me, Slime, what the heck have you been up to? It's been six months, where are the videos at? Where's the hide and seek content? And to be honest, it's been a bit of a dry spell on the CSGO Steam Workshop. You know, there haven't really been any any maps that have particularly piqued my interest enough to make a make a full video about and uh, beyond that I haven't really had much time to play any CSGO uh, because I have been doing all the school works but there has been something pretty cool that's come out of uh, one of my assignments and uh, I think I think you guys are gonna like it so uh, one of my assignments for my intro to programming class was to create a game for our midterm in this language called processing over here. Check it out, download it if you want to mod this game. But over here on GitHub is where I've actually uploaded all the source code and the executable files. And so, yeah, I made a game and it's pretty fun. According to my friends who have played it, and it's also highly addictive. It's, uh, it's kind of difficult. It's a simple, simple 2D game. Um, like I said, coded and processing. Uh, and uh, yeah, my friend Sama created uh, the, the theming for this game. I just wrote the code, programmed it, uh, and then this ladder, which you'll see. I downloaded from the Google. Uh, so, for those of you who are interested in purely playing the game, you can skip ahead, but I just wanted to go ahead and look at the code for those of you who, uh, you know, program or might be interested in potentially making a 2D game yourself. Basically, uh, processing is this weird version of Java. Uh, so if you know that, and you're familiar with with the uh, object-oriented programming, uh, you'll you'll be you'll be right at home. And uh, if you haven't programmed before, but you're just interested, and Java is pretty easy to learn, so I highly recommend you check out like Solo Learn or something, and uh, start programming because this was actually like pretty pretty fun to to create. But anyways, I have most of the most everything commented that needs comments um and all i try to keep i try to keep all the variables pretty self-explanatory um and so yeah there's uh the level elements you got their platforms your water your ladder your triggers all the arrays which are used to load down here, this has got to set up. The game runs at 1280p, that's something you could change if you're gonna mod it. And uh, yeah, pretty, pretty good stuff down here. Essentially just loading everything in, checking all the logic for the enemies. And then we have our different screens and uh, we go into like the actor class, as you can see at the top of the file, I have all the variables. So these are things you can, if you're interested in modding, you can change relatively easily with like no programming experience at all, because you just change numbers. Do be warned though, you could break it, but I mean, that's the fun of programming. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, if you're If you're interested in modding it, open it in the desktop github app um, uh, otherwise download it and you might have to run it as administrator because your computer will probably think it's a virus but it is not a virus all right uh for some reason everyone i bring here is like oh it's a virus but it's not because that the whole reason the whole reason it's on github because you can literally look at every single file 
and see exactly what's in it. But anyways, like I said, it's not about it. But when you download it, you'll get this nice zip. And uh, you just go ahead and extract that to wherever you want the game to be located on your hard drive. And boom, I put it on my desktop. All of this is just the source files. You don't have to worry about that. You can basically just delete that. If you're only interested in playing, you have to worry about the dot app for Mac. You should be able to just right click and run that on Windows. We have the executable. Very nice. As you can see, it works. Hooray. Uh, there are there are three controls you need to use because uh, there's there's no tutorial or anything. The, the controls are A and D and left click. Um, so click anywhere to play. You start by shooting a bullet off and uh, by the way, the game is tied to frame rate because I'm kind of a novice coder. So it's running actually pretty fast. Um, if you're on a slower computer, it's obviously going to run significant. It could run significantly slower. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's a hard game. You can just move left and right and shoot, and uh, you survive rounds basically. Very simple, but yeah, like I said, it's a lot of fun. Very addictive. Um, in order to go up the water, just walk over it. Um, your bullets will kill you, which I should probably show. Uh, I'll just stand in the way here. Uh, trying to kill myself. What is this? There we go. Well, the bullets will kill you. That's something you have to watch out for, and it goes across the screen exactly two times before it will despawn. Um, and that's one of the things you can change if you decide to mod it. And if enough of you enjoy this, like I'll definitely go ahead and add sounds and music if if you guys are interested in that, uh, or I could add other stuff as well because it's pretty pretty simple to to change. Uh, as far as like the inspiration for this game goes, if you're interested in kind of like the behind the scenes, I'll talk about that a little bit now. Um, the the two main inspirations for this game were uh, Pac Man and Call of Duty Nazi Zombies. Uh, the reason for this is, number one, I, like, you have to create a 2D game, basically. Uh, you can kind of create a 3D game in processing, but I don't know why you would. I, I don't know. I didn't even think about that at all. So basically, you're creating a 2D game. That's the kind of the parameters for this assignment. And I didn't want to do a side-scroller, because that sounded kind of... It sounded like too much to get into for me. I just wanted a simple static level uh, which I could you know design uh, just put platforms where I wanted it and the ladder and the water and then what what I really love about Pac-Man is the the little portal on either side of the screen and so to me I think that's what makes that's like one of the unique abilities of a 2D game is to like project a flat screen around a cylinder almost. That was the goal or like around a sphere actually. Because if you go if you go from any any one side of the screen you'll get to the other side of the screen. So that's that wraparound effect is something that I really enjoy about 2D games. So that's something I definitely wanted to keep. And then you know, I'm I'm obviously a big action a uh, shooter fan, CSGO, so I wanted to have, I wanted it to be, uh, what's the word, difficult in the sense that, you know, you shoot yourself, like, that bullet is meaningful because you're so fragile, like, if you get shot in the head in CS, you're just dead, and, you know, there's no second chance, and so that's something I wanted to preserve as well. The idea that you know you can sh you can shoot yourself and you'll die, um, and then uh, also the round system from Nazi Zombies. That's just that's just the easiest thing to code, I think. Really, rather than having like a progression of levels uh, that get harder or whatever, you just spawn more enemies. That was just 
with the time I had to create this, this was a three week project, but I ended up doing the entire thing over the course of 72 hours. So, so that just made the most sense, I think. Uh, but yeah, that's sort of the, the, the inspiration game designery, uh, background of this game. And as far as like the actual like programming stuff goes, uh, it, it was a little bit, a little bit of a, of a task, you know, I had to break stuff down. So there's a, there's a couple classes in this game. You have the actor class and then like the actor, what well, extends the actor class is the actual player class and the enemy class. There's a, those are both actors and then you have bullets, obviously. For those of you who are familiar with object oriented programming, and um, then you have uh, the the box class is the, like the platforms uh, or really it's just anything like all of these are just boxes uh, and there's no physics it's all collision I pressed K by the way to enter debug mode and what what that does is it will show you the coordinates on the screen this was just super helpful when I was making the game then it will also give you the uh, the motion vector of the direction you know that they're moving. So every because it's based on frames, essentially every frame the computer loads, it will move the guy five pixels to the direction of whatever the vector says. And uh, as I'm sure you can tell, there are there are a couple glitches that I didn't fix, but you know I consider it complete because I turned it in already. You can and you can go through the platform if you go fast enough because of the way the frames update. Uh, and then this little guy is basically the foot or the feet, and when this collides with you know a platform then it will stop, it'll like reset the, the motion vector. I don't know, I'm, I think this is making sense to some of you. These are the spawners. Um, this is the ladder trigger, which I'm sure you've seen. All you do is you walk into it and then it will set your motion vector to go up. Uh, and then when you are not on a platform, it will reset you to gravity. Uh, and then you'll go down, and then when you're when you're in water, then it will move you at a slower rate. Um, as far as the AI go, that was this thing I saved to the very end of the project. I'm like, frick, how am I gonna how am I gonna get this little guy to chase you around this map? Because there's no way for him to know, like, how to navigate this level that I made really like how do you tell him that there's a platform over here and here and like use the ladder and like chase the guy but that was actually a pretty complex question but it, I came up with a pretty simple solution uh, for those of you who know how AI work in a lot of 3d games is there's a there's a navigation mesh that is created uh, like sort of like this one here and that just tells the uh, the enemies all the different paths they can follow to get to you. And so what it does in my game, I call this the quadrant system, even though there's six of them, is it will determine uh, one through six where the player is and then where the, the enemy is. And depending on which quadrant you're in, it will tell the enemy to move either left or right. And that's very, very basic because it's only it's only a binary system. You can move left or right, like it's gonna be one or the other. So that immediately makes things significantly easier. And that's part of the reason there's no jumping in this game. Uh, number one, just to make it more difficult and to make sure that, you know, as the as the player, you're constantly repositioning because uh, if you jump then you're just jumping over everything and, and that's not what I that's not that wasn't my goal for this but anyway uh, as you can see you know the 
when you move from this quadrant to this quadrant, instead of going all the way across the screen, the little guy knows, all right, I can just go off the screen and appear on this side of the screen. It doesn't really know that, but it just knows like if I move left, that's actually closer because of the how the screen is divided up, if that makes sense. But yeah, this is the debug mode. And um, yeah, that that's basically all I wanted to cover. Uh, like I said, the theming was done by my friend Sama, and I really loved the whole uh, the whole strawberry thing because I just told her this was a programming assignment. Uh, I was like, I don't have time to do art. I only have three days left to do this project. Uh, I need you to come through for me. Just do literally make anything. And then uh, I told her like it's gonna be a shooting game. I need you know a player and an enemy, and then she sent me this. And it's really great theming. And then I uh, I just updated the the gun. I just flipped it upside down to make him a gangster strawberry because you know that's way cooler in my opinion. But anyway, yeah, this is this is slime one hundred three strawberry game, and uh, the high score of all my friends is three rounds the world record is currently held by myself which is five rounds so that that's the number to beat guys if you do get above that you know or you just want to show your high score to me please go ahead and screenshot that put it in the discord i'd love to see uh how how long you guys can survive and then more than that just like what if any of you decide to mod it what you guys come up with or any of the glitches that you find you know yeah, th that's my uh, strawberry game. Like I said, it was a lot of fun to make. Uh, and that's one of the things I've been doing at school this past few months. I'm a, I'm a game design major, by the way. So that's why I made a game. Uh, and I'll be making more games that you can look forward to. And um, that's really all I have for this video. Uh, links in the description for GitHub if you want to download it, play it. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. As always, thanks for watching and peace.